Can you see now? Yes, Prabhu. All right, 4.29. <clears throat> Please repeat. Nashta Socha Muda Dio. Nashta Socha Muda Dio. Jata Bas Data Bas Masti Darinaha. Jata Bas Masti Darinaha. Yo. Okay, there was some echo. I just fixed it. <clears throat> Vishantu Shiva Dakshayam. Vishantu Shiva Dakshayam. Yatra Devam Surashavam. Yatra Devam Surasamam. Nashta Saucha Moodhadiyo. Nashta Saucha Moodhadiyo. Jata basmasti darinaha. Jata basmasti darinaha. Vishantu shiva dikshayam. Shantu shiva dikshayam. Yatra daivam surasavam. Yatra daivam surasavam. Nashta socha mudha diyo. Nashta socha mudha diyo. Jata basmasti darinaha. Jata Bhasmash Vidharinaha Vishantu Shiva Dikshayam Vishantu Shiva Dikshayam Yatra Devam Surasavam Yatra Devam Surasavam okay, Synonyms Nashta Sojaha Cleanliness being abandoned Nashta Shaucha, cleanliness being abandoned. Mudha Diya, foolish. Mudha Diya, foolish. Jata Bhasmasti, Jata Bhasmasti Dharinaha, wearing long hairs, ashes, and bones. Jata Bhasma Asti Dharinaha, wearing long hair, ashes, and bones. Vishantu may enter. Vishantu may enter. Shiva Dikshayam into initiation of worship of Shiva. Shiva Dikshayam into initiation of worship of Shiva. Yatra where? Yatra where? Devam are spiritual. Devam are spiritual. Shura Ashabham wine and liquor. Sura Asavam, wine and liquor. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Eshi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. Those who vow to worship Lord Shiva are so foolish that they imitate Him by keeping long hair on their heads. When initiated into worship of Lord Shiva, they, pre they prefer to live on wine, flesh, and other such things. Purport. Indulging in wine and meat, keeping long hair on one's head, not bathing daily, and smoking ganja, marijuana, are some of the habits which are accepted by foolish creatures who do not have regulated lives. By such, a, by such a behavior, one becomes devoid of transcendental knowledge. In the initiation into the Shiva Mantra, they are Mudrikastaka, in which it is sometimes recommended that one make his sitting place on the uh, vagina and uh, thus desire nirvana and dissolution of existence. 
in that process of worship uh wine is needed or sometimes in the place of wine palm tree juice which is converted into an intoxicant this is also offered according to the shiva shiva agama a scripture on the method of worshiping lord shiva om ajnana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गधाधर शिवाषदि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम 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 Hare Krishna. So we are discussing this section where the assembled sages, rishis, searching each other. So we discussed like first, Nandi Swara cursed all the brahmanas, uh, all the uh, brahmanas who supported Daksha Prajapati or uh, uh, did not uh, raise their concern. and also he cursed daksha prajapati as well uh, hearing such curse um uh, bhrugu you know counter curses the uh, followers of lord shiva so uh, yesterday we discussed um uh, so in the 27th uh, 27 to uh, 32 verse we will discuss the bhugus karshesh so first he said that um let the followers of lord shiva become atheist asindi and be diverted from transcendental scriptural injection you know and they will be uh, uh following the asat shastra you know sat shastra pari pari panthinah means that mayavadi philosophy they will be a knowledgeable with mayavadi philosophy hmm? and was there a very uh, elaborately we discussed how that mayavadi philosophy uh, came into picture and there is a purpose behind uh, that uh, lord has a plan to bring um, the impersonalist or um, you know uh, the sunyavadis or nirvana the uh, the buddhism back to you know vaishnavism right so that's what the intermediate stage was impersonalist then from impersonalist to bring back to the pure vaishnavism <clears throat> now um in this verse brugu continues his curse uh, he says that um become addicted to the wine flesh etc imitating lord shiva with long hair okay so he says that those who those who vow to worship lord shiva are so foolish that they imitate him by keeping long hair on their heads when initiated into worship of lord shiva they pre- prefer to live on wine flesh and other such things so this is what the curse he is giving all the followers of shiva become like this and prabhupad here um giving little uh, detail into Uh, some of the initiation process now he says that uh, i uh, um, in the initiation into the shiva mantra there are mudrika ashtaka in which it is sometimes recommended that one make his sitting place uh on on the vagina veg- and thus desire nirvana and dissolution of existence you know some kind of you know i don't know this some kind of process prabhupad is bringing that you know i do not have an idea all this uh, mudrika ashtaka and etc in that process of worship wine is needed and, or sometimes in place of wine palm tree juice which is converted into the intoxicant i remember uh, in my childhood you know in my home uh, my parents used to perform um 
Trimurti Pujas, you know, every, I think every month or every quarter regularly they do that, you know, and uh, during that puja, uh, they uh, they bring uh, uh, the ganja because they offer ganja to Lord Shiva, okay, um, ganja and some kind of intoxicate, intoxicant, uh, intoxicated material, they bring it, they, be, uh, they, they bring, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? And beetle leaves and beetle and all such kind of you know things ganja and also to offer uh, you know uh, to Lord Shiva. I mean uh, now I remember right uh, when I when I when Prabhupada is saying like uh, uh, this statement then that, that's what it remembers me you know I, that how our parents used to do you know and why ganja they're offering so maybe these are the process you know so this is also offered according to Shiva Agama, a, a scripture on the uh, method of worshipping Lord Shiva, you know. Yeah, I think so, some of the uh, scripture talks about this, you know, how we need to offer ganja and all this, you know. Uh, if you see that they've offered wine also, wine is needed. And in the place of wine, they do the pram juice and, and they put all the intoxicants, uh, offer it, and uh, they drink it. And I, I remember in the Sivaratri, in the many places today, they... The, they um, make that kind of intoxicating liquor and they drink it. Even today, in the many places, you know, I remember also like in my um, when I was uh, studying right in the college, right in the in the in that day in our hostel, they used to make like a big big drums of uh, you know that uh, what you call bhang it called. I don't know what they mix it. I don't some kind of intoxicated material they mix it and that's the, they say they say that it is recommended to drink uh, uh, those liquor or intoxicated uh, liquid uh, on that day and it is auspicious you know these are all man-made theories they bring it right so that is what uh, you know uh, here Prabhupada say indulging in a wine and meat keeping long hair on one's head not bathing daily not smoking ganja I mean, uh, and smoking ganja are some of the habits which are accepted by foolish creatures who do not have a regulated life. By such behavior, one becomes devoid of transcendental knowledge. Right? Shiva never uh, told about this, right? Because these are all imitation. You know, they try, the foolish people, they try to imitate, you know, uh, the Lord, you know, they don't follow the what Lord's instruction, but they want to become the Lord. That is the biggest problem of everybody. You know, if Shiva can do, why can't we do? I mean, Shiva can do. That's fine. He is the his position. Is he has an exalted position? Do you have? Do we have that exalted? No. Then why do you imitate? Right? Shiva Shiva drank uh, poison. And he drank the poison because he is the, uh, the uh, that power to keep the poison in the uh, you know the neck, right? That's why he his neck becomes nila nila. That's why he's known nila kantha, throat, right? So that is what uh, Siva can do, but not human being. But human human being are trying to imitate Lord Shiva. So that is what not recommended. Those are foolish people. You know, even though they follow Shiva, they don't follow the correctly. You know, they do bring some th theory, some uh, man-made uh, processes, and try to do that. So here, uh, Brugu Muni is cursing that uh, those who bow to worship Lord Shiva are so foolish that they imitate. You know, and that's what we see. That that's what we see. It's happening today. We'll go to the next verse. <laughs> 30th verse. Brahmacha Brahman Brahmanam Shaiva. Brahmacha Brahmana Shaiva Yadyuyam Parini Parinindata Yadyuyam Parinindata Shetum Vidaranam Pumsam 
ಪರಿಂದಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಯ Brahmamuni continue Since you blaspheme the Vedas and the Brahmanas who are the followers of the Vedic principles it is understood that you have already taken shelter of the doctrine of atheism Purport Brahmamuni in cursing Nandishwara said that not only would they be degraded as atheists because of this curse but they had already fallen to the standard of atheism because they had blasphemed the Vedas which are the source of human civilization human civilization is based on the qualitative divisions of social order namely the intelligent class martial class the productive class and the laborer class the vedas provided the right direction for advancing in spiritual cultivation and economic development and regulating the principle of sense gratification so that ultimately one may be liberated from material contamination to his real state of spiritual identification aham brahmasmi as long as as long as one is in the contamination of material existence one changes bodies from the aquatic sub to the position of brahma but the human form of life is the highest perfectional life in the material world the vedas give directions by which to elevate oneself in the next life the vedas are the mother for such instructions and the brahmanas or persons who are in the knowledge of the vedas are the father thus if one blasphemes the vedas and brahmanas naturally one goes down to the status of atheism the exact word used in sanskrit is nastika which refers to one who does not believe in the vedas but manufactures some concocted system of religion Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said that the followers of the Buddhist system of religion are Nastikas. In order to establish his doctrine of non-violence, Lord Buddha flatly refused to believe in the Vedas. And thus later on, Shankaracharya stopped this system of religion in India and forced it, forced it to go outside India. Here it is stated, Brahmacha Brahmana. Brahma means the Vedas. Aham Brahmasmi means I am in full knowledge. The Vedic assertion is that one should think that he is Brahman or actually he is Brahman. If Brahma or the Vedic spiritual science is condemned and the masters of the spiritual science, the Brahmanas are condemned, then where does human civilization stand? Brigamuni said, it is not due to my cursing that you shall become atheist. you are already situated in the principle of vedas therefore you are condemned thank you hmm so here it says rugumini since you blasting the vedas and the brahmanas who are followers 
of the Vedic principle, it is understood that you have already taken shelter of doctrine of atheism. <clears throat> so, we see that in the when Nandiswara, no? um, curse to the Brahmana. So he said, right? Um, be anyone who has supported Daksha and neglected Lord Shiva is less intelligent because of this vision of duality. They will be bereft of transcendental knowledge, and they'll become pret, uh, pret, pret, you know, pretended religious household, and where they will be attached to material happiness and thus attracted to the superficial explanation of Veda and become a karma kandi, all such like that uh, Nandiswara cursed Taksha and his followers, right? So here uh, Brugumani is saying that because uh, you are cursing Brahmana you know, and then you also blaspheme the Vedas means uh, how how did he blaspheme by saying this statement? Knowledge, bereft of knowledge, Vedas. You know, you won't. So, in one way of uh, you know, kind of saying like blaspheming Veda. And also, he Nandi Swaram said, person dull with materialistic education and within the minds attract to the flower, flowery language of Vedas. You know, they will uh, attracted by the. Um, Karma Kandi or flowery language of Vedas, like that, you know. So, one way he's uh, trying to blaspheme the Vedas and Brahmanas here, who are the followers of Vedic principle. And that's why he's saying that. So, you already, uh, you know, taken shelter of doctrine of atheism, you know. So, it's not because I'm cursing you, that's why you will become like that. But you already, because you are, uh, um, you, bla you blaspheme the Vedas, you don't understand the position of Brahmanas, that's why you are already in the place of atheism. So it's like typically the quarrel is happening, right? So if you can understand that, the situation, how it is going, you know. Uh, so all everything started from um, Daksha Prajapati, you know, because of her... Uh, because of his false ego, because of his, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, uh, desire for prestige and other, desire for respect, prestige, you know, expectation of that, he um, started blaspheming Lord Shiva, first of all, first. And then Nandiswara, of course, uh, again, Nandiswara, uh, when he heard that, he couldn't control, uh, whereas Lord Shiva himself uh, has tolerated, but Nandiswara did not. He started uh, cursing back to the, the Daksha and his followers. So now that's what uh, the question comes. Why did he uh, curse all the Brahmanas there? And by hearing that, the, uh, the Brigumani, who is the part of those Brahmanas, again cursed back, you know, counter curse to Nandiswara and the other Brahmanas. So in a one way, I mean, Nandiswara and the followers of Shiva. So this is where you see how uh, the curse, cursing and counter cursing is happening. In one sense, even Brugumani is not doing the right, correct way, you know, to cursing all the Brahmana like that. So it's basically uh, uh, typical, the quarrel is happening, you know. So now uh, um, the Prabhupada here says, you know, Brugumani in cursing Nandiswara said that not only would they be degraded as an atheist, atheist because of the discuss, but they had already fallen to the standard of atheism because they had blasphemed the Vedas, which are the source of human civilization. So human civilization is based on the qualitative divisions of social order, namely you know, four divisions, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishya and Sudras. The Vedas provide the right direction for advancing in spiritual cultivation and economic development and regulative cultivation so that 
ultimately one way liberated from the material uh, contamination so this veda talks about dharma artha kama and moksha okay especially there's four dharma you know what is your uh, right or uh, occupational duty based on the uh, varna you know what uh, varna means which category one belongs to right based on that the vedas describe the different occupational duty dharma and uh, artha how can we deb- gain uh, artha money and other uh, benefits right by p- properly following the rules and regulation and with the artha how can we do the sense gratification you know by proper uh, engaging that money into artha and finally uh, uh, the it will talk about some the moksha also. these are the vedas uh, but uh, our uh, you know actually uh, for pure devotional service one need not to go through dharma artha and kama moksha you know one not it's a big, dharma artha kama moksha is a gradual elevation process okay but uh, the vedas are recommended for those who are with uh, the over uh, you know cannot come to the pure devotional service platform okay vedas because they need a uh, gradual elevation and after the moksha moksha is also not easy right uh, then uh, so there are different types of moksha also there that you know we know that the five different types of liberation our nectar of devotion says right um so the pure moksha or liberation is what become the uh, eternal servant of lord and going back to the spiritual world right um but coming back to the point right um okay krishna says in bhagavad gita uh, to arjuna trigunya vishyan veda you know we just uh, go beyond the vedas you know the vish- uh, the veda talks about all the dharma artha kama, kama moksha but go beyond the the vedas and become transcendent to that you know follow the principle of pure bhakti you know and even bhagavatam also says that you know bhagavatam second uh, first canto second chapter uh, suta gosami and uh, to answer the questions of sage shap nevishri say that you know uh, one should not perform dharma to get artha you no know? one should perform the dharma to get directly to uh, moksha and even though one is getting artha one should not use that artha to kama to uh, sense gratification one should use that artha again to moksha and one should not perform the kama uh just for sense that we one should perform the, uh, you know fulfill the desire in dovetail of krishna so like that one should one should do that so here uh, pro, uh, continuing to propat purport uh, propat says uh, the vedas provide the right direction for advancing in spiritual cultivation and economic development all this right? one may be liberated from material contamination to his real state of spiritual identification you know by following as long as one is in the contamination of material existence one changes bodies from aquatics up to the brahma but the human form of life is the highest professional life in the material world the vedas give direction to by which to elevate one self to the next life so the exact word used in sanskrit is nastika which refer to one who does not believe the vedas but manuf- manufactures some concocted system of religion so that's why um, here so like this is what propas said sri chaitanya mahapuras said that uh, the followers of the buddhist system of religion so this is what we discussed nastik right how the buddhism and sankaracharya we discussed elaborately yesterday aham brahmasmi means i am in full of full knowledge the vedic assertion is that one should think that he is brahman 
but actually he is brahman if Brahm, brahma or the vedic science spiritual science is condemned and the master of the spiritual science the brahmanas are condemned then where does human civilization stand so brugumini said that's why brugumini said it is not due to my cursing that you shall become atheist you are already situated in the principle therefore you are condemned any question or comment till now what we discussed okay. any other question not from today or any other it has like next verse is very i think it has a big purport we can continue tomorrow hari krishna prabhu ji dandar pranam i i think prabhu ji you've explained it very nicely uh, all these verses it's becoming more and more clear now like you know why because yesterday we were disc- trying to find out why daksha uh was cursing the brahmanas but i think uh i mean basically uh the fight should not have happened but now we are getting those little little uh the details tiny details that uh what must be happening in their minds what are they thinking and how dakshapati is also thinking that blaspheming the vedas is not the correct thing to do and those people are following somewhat the path of atheism so that is the reason why he is getting angry so i think these things are getting a little bit more clear now yeah yeah i mean thing is that right what is correct and what is wrong we uh, we cannot ignatly judge because even the uh, prajapatis you know we mm-hmm. cannot say that they are at a highest a uh, spiritual platform right if they are at a highest spiritual platform then uh, they can they could have tolerated or they could have you know not could not have reacted like this but you know they are you know prajapatis you know they are brahmanas they are following the scriptures and um they are you know father of brahma they may not be uh, situated that uh elevated position they still they have some uh anarthas with them that's why this all, all such reaction are popping up right so that's what we need mm-hmm. to understand right right and even this is true for you know uh all of us right if you see that as long as that all the anarthas are not eradicated doesn't matter how long we practice bhakti uh, still we get such reactions that's why even um devotees quarrel okay so i was reading um, some of the i saw i mean i, mean, I was hearing short clips of uh, bhakti charan sani maharaj so what he said that uh, this maya is so strong right he also try to bewilder uh, devotees so now devotees have accepted the path of uh, bhakti so they do not at least do other activity intoxication uh, sense uh, you know different types of sense gratification meat eating in, you know uh, all other uh, you know they don't do that uh, they follow the four regular principle then how uh, the maya can disturb them so that's where the maya uh, disturb them through this anartha you know and they they a uh, maya try to uh, 
agitate uh, between the devotee and we see that devotees devotees fight most of the time they don't fight with the rest of the world they don't involve any kind of uh, sinful activity but they try to fight each other they try to you know vaishnava aparad they do uh, you know uh, they aparad you know do uh, commit aparad to other vaishnava you know so that is what the maya try to create you no know? because maya try uh, maya uh, tries to look for all the opportunity you know so that's why this uh, maya in, in entered into the devotees and they try to make fight with them. so that is why uh, we need to practice bhakti strong and we need first of all we need to understand this concept you know uh, we need to continue uh, always uh, read scripture hear scripture you know and chant sincerely and uh, you know the more we chant those anarthas will be eradicated you know that's why it's a gradual process but mm-hmm. we need to do that and many time um, uh, some of my friends are not friend but the new new people who come into iskon you know try to practice bhakti they they ask me okay i see devotees fight each other so if you see that you you see you are a follower of krishna you are initiated devotee you you are doing the bhakti and all these things and i see the quarrel between devotees then i don't feel any difference i thought i i he, um, um, he said that uh, usually we think that when you come to iskon fo- follow the path you know there should not be any such kind of uh, occurrence but then what is the use of coming to krishna consciousness and uh, di- uh, you know devoting our uh, valuable time in doing bhakti and all right whereas we see that devotee squirrel the answer is the same because it doesn't mean that one when someone took initiation and started chanting in hari krishna mahamantra following the scripture uh, hearing the scripture and uh, on the day one he becomes purified day one he becomes uh, uh, you know uh, free from all the anartha you know it is a gradual process if you see that um, the nine stages of uh, bhakti adho shraddha sadhu sanga bhajana kriya anartha nivritti you know then asakti ruchi you know uh, bhava prema like that nine stages are there right so the stages it's not that one stage uh, will come uh, i mean next stage will come when the first, uh, the previous stage is complete you over no it is a parallel process you know first we develop to shraddha shraddha will be very little first and uh, uh, we uh, you know shraddha adho shraddha and sadhu sanga and we do the association of the devotee and bhajana kriya we when then we start bhajana kriya means chanting hearing um, all different devotional process then uh, anartha nivritti right so it's not that uh, when the complete bhajana kriya is done then anartha nivritti phase will start no the, when the moment we start the bhajana kriya and the sadhu sanga the anartha nivritti uh, the think about all this uh, a progress bar we have a nine progress bars so shraddha little start lit, uh, it uh, uh, 10% and uh, sadhu sangha 20% uh, uh, you know bhajana kriya 20% then uh, anartha nivritti 2% and asakti uh, ruchi all 0000% now uh, bhajana kriya increased to 30% we did little more then shraddha increased more 20% uh, sadhu sangha increased 30% then anartha nivritti goes 20% when anartha nivritti at least reached to 50% then our little asakti start next stage uh, 2% so it's all parallel progress you know so that is why it's um, when when becomes 100% uh, anartha nivritti then then uh, maybe the asakti will be 50% at them bhava will be 2% prema will be 0% see 
when uh, even though the anartha nivritti 100% we don't have a asakti uh, 100% we don't have a bhava 100% maybe 3% bhava 0% so it's continuous process the, the pro, like that it's a parallel process the bar bar keep moving you know so that is why we cannot say that even though uh, uh, um, someone is practicing bhakti for 20 years 30 years he he should be at the elevated position it is a progress bar you know you know so that is why you understand so that's why you know the, the devotees also uh, become victim of maya sometimes so how can we come out of that you know that's why we have to have uh, the strong desire to take shelter of krishna and pray krishna always please do not engage me or don't make me victim of maya you know please always engage me in your service that is why we sincerely chant hare krishna mantra please engage me in your service don't make me victim of maya we should pray always you know we should pray always and sincerely look for that you know because krishna's mercy should be there otherwise you know even devotees will be victimized by the maya thing so this is what we need to understand yes mm-hmm. prabhu ji one question uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh talking about the anarthas uh, is it uh, is it uh, possible that if somebody is uh, doing bhakti with great humility with great dedication sincerity then at least Uh, okay it will take time for the anarthas to still go away because it's a very continuous gradual process and it takes many many uh, a longer time and lot of sadhana but is it possible that at least the anarthas will not increase if not going away completely increase yes so yeah the uh, that is what you know the program when the when we do more sadhana right the anarthas will keep decreasing it won't increase that's true you know um so uh, that is the our um, measuring factor right how mm-hmm. do you know our bhakti is progressing you know the the when we see that our anarthas are decreasing then we we can uh, understand that okay our bhakti is progressing you know that is the only um, measuring unit for uh, understanding whether we are progressing bhakti right so let's say we don't we do, uh, that is possible right see um when we uh, take shelter of krishna our attachment to the material object material things will slowly uh, uh, you know gets demin- uh, lesser and lesser right? we don't find that much interest oh i don't want to do yeah that's was it that's everyone is experiencing that right we don't we are not greedy about something material attachment our we we are free from illusion you know then mesh is the uh, the lust anger and greed these are the top three anarthas right lust lust will also will be have anger so this is also anger you know that is the way it's like a, anger will go at the end you know it's a very strong anartha no others will go slowly you know greed uh, uh, lust you know uh, illusion um uh, attachment you know these mm-hmm. anarthas will go mm-hmm. easily but anger is the one which will go air band it's a very strong anartha it takes long time once we purify it, then the anger will go but yes we will uh, the more we practice right more we uh, take shelter of krishna this anartha will go slowly we don't develop um, you know i mean it won't increase but mm-hmm. yeah it again when you do the bhakti without any offense that's mm-hmm. the more important there are nine, 10 offenses in bhakti right may the mm-hmm. primary offense when you avoid those offenses and do the bhakti then the our the, these anartha won't increase but even uh, you do bhakti at the same time we do the uh, offenses then what happens it will neutralize you know mm-hmm. there is no progress here in like vaishnava aparad all such kind of is very dangerous you know upon uh, blasting the vedic scriptures you know you know so that that is what you know it is you know it's very uh, complicated and that's why bhakti one sense we say that it's easy and other sense is that it's not so easy mm-hmm. it's not the simply chanting hari krishna mahamantra one can uh, become a paramahansa devotee no 
Hare Krishna Mahamantra is very important at the same time, you know, we need to take care of the other aspect, like completely avoid of Vaishnava Prad, huh? completely, uh, you know, rejecting the material attachments, you know, strong believe in Krishna. It's, we should not say that, okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, you know, um, that lot of conviction uh, has to be there. Lots of sadha, you know, the faith should be 100%. Mm-hmm. Then only, you know, we can say that, okay, we will, uh, you know, we are purified completely. Otherwise, yes, this anger, this uh, greed, lust, and anger, right, uh, this will be the last thing which will go away. Anger especially. You know? The anger... When we completely understood that we are not at the bodily platform, you know, why the anger comes, we discussed many times, right? The anger comes for two reasons, right? One is if you are um, if you are, uh, if you are at a false ego, you know, if you are at the bodily platform, right? If you consider yourself based on your designation as a bodily, like why the humiliation is coming? Even if they think about the Daksha Prajapati, he was thinking that he, he is... Uh, superior than Lord Shiva or in terms of that uh, family relationship, okay? He should uh, uh, offer respect uh, to him. Why that come? Because we are thinking we're bodily platform. If, if, at the soul level, there is no superiority, no inferiority. At the soul level, all are equal platform and they are under the control of the Supreme Lord. They're serving, you know, but only when it comes to a bodily level, then only the relationship comes. Then only the hierarchy comes. Boss, uh, I, I'm the subordinate to you, all these things. This all um, uh, come in a material world only, right? This relationship, mm-hmm. this uh, hierarchy, everything. It's all bodily platform. I'm the boss, I'm this, that. So first thing is that this false ego should be completely gone. You know, That is only possible then we always, uh, you know, into this bhakti process, you know, then only we can develop that quality. Mm-hmm. Second is that, yeah, we uh, uh, the desires, right? The, our senses, sense desire. If some sense desire is not fulfilled, uh, then on, then we'll get a um, hanger, right? So mm-hmm. two things: the false ego and the the desire, right? Which our desires are not satisfied. So these two, that's why we need a proper intelligence at the time. And the intelligence can be developed by hearing and for uh, and reading the scriptures, uh, hearing from Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, what they say, if you sincerely hear them and um, understand that concept, then only our intelligence will be, you know, what you call purified or sharpened and then when we get that intelligence, then we can control everything. Mm-hmm. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> all right. Let's offer our obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Vancha kalpa taru hischa kripa shindhu bhaevacha pati tanam pavanipyo vaishnavebyo namo namo Ananta Koti Vaishnav Dinda Ki Jai, Granthara Srimat Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna everyone. Praise Ransom.